In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we come to celebrate this Mass. Let us first call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to O Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may constantly exalt the merits of your martyrs, whom Pope St. Damascus so venerated and loved. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. I read him from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I, the Lord your God, teach you what is for your good and lead you on the way you should go. If you would hearken to my commandments, your prosperity would be like a river, and your vindication like the waves of the sea. Your descendants would be like the sand, and those born of your stock like its grains. Their name never cut off or blotted out from my presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. I read him from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, To what shall I compare this generation? It is like children who sit in the marketplaces and call to one another. We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He is possessed like a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Look, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by her works. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
For today we celebrate the feast day of Pope Damascus I, who lived in the 4th century. And I would say really had a tumultuous papacy, had to deal with a lot of problems. One was is there was an anti-pope along with him. Um, the devotees of his successor, Theodorus, elected another pope because they didn't like Damascus. And there was great tension between them, even bloodshed in the churches. It almost ripped Rome apart. Damascus also had to deal with many, many heresies. And his answer to that was great holiness, rebuilding of churches, but also promulgating St. Jerome's Bible, his translation of the Bible into Latin, the Vulgate. And it was through that that he was able to really bring the church back to unity and back to right belief. He had to denounce several of his brother bishops who were falling into heresy all over the known world at that time. But yet he was able to stay true and able to really give us a very beautiful example of devotion to the saints, the early church martyrs. I think for us, so when we look at our readings, we see how in our gospel reading, the last line, but wisdom is vindicated by her works. Meaning we know wisdom when you see it lived out, when you see the fruits of that wisdom in our own lives and the way we live our lives. And this is where Jesus is saying to the crowds, you know, played a flute, um, sang a dirge, and you didn't react. Meaning a lot of people say the faith should be, or the fruits of faith should be according to my action, my metric, my way of seeing things. So if I do this, this should happen. If I do this, that should happen. But yet God is saying that wisdom is vindicated by her works, not our works, not by our expectations. That true wisdom is seen because it's seen as being godly. So too, in our reading from the prophet Isaiah, we see how Isaiah the prophet is likening uh, the just, those who hearken to his commandments, that prosperity would be like a river and vindication like the waves of the sea. These are really interesting images, that prosperity would be like a river. Of course, in the desert, the only things that were green were next to the rivers. There was great prosperity right next to the river, but away from the river, there was nothing. And so those who are connected to the living water have great life. But also a river flows downhill. It's very predictable where a river will flow. But yet how much effort we put into trying to reflow rivers or redirect rivers or put them somewhere else, how often we fight gravity and water, even in our own community on the farms. But yet salvation flows like a river, meaning that it flows following the natural law that God has established. But yet, if we try to go against that natural order, it takes huge effort. In other words, it's easier to follow God's commands. It's easier to be holy than to fight it. You have indication like the waves of the sea. What causes the waves of the sea? Well, the wind. And of course, there's an image of the Holy Spirit breathing upon the waters being blown by God the Father upon the waters, bringing life into being, bringing creation into being, separating the waters from below, from the waters above, so that we have a place to live. And thus, waves are caused by the Holy Spirit, by the very breath of God, by the very strength and love of God working in our lives and animating us into action. Thus, my brothers and sisters, I think when we think about our spiritual journey, we should see it in terms of it being natural. You know, these days a lot of people talk about, you know, being holistic or, or living more naturally. And oftentimes it means buying organic foods or doing meditations or doing other things which are good. But for us as Catholics, we're called to be even more organic, more holistic because believing in God is our default natural mode as human beings. The Ten Commandments are inscribed in our very hearts. To live a life of sin, to live a life that is against God's commandments is unnatural, takes more effort. It's like trying to redirect a river. It does not work well. It does not bear good fruit. And I think for each of us to really recognize that living our lives is the way God calls us to be blown by the Holy Spirit, to be animated by Him, is really the goal that allows us to never be cut off from his presence, to really know his love and his effects in our lives. I don't know why all of humanity doesn't see things the same way. I think this is what our gospel reading is getting at. 
You know, why don't people see God the same way and understand things the same way? Why don't we see the same good? And I think the answer to that comes very clearly about the fruits that we bear. Because some people live their lives by a different drumbeat. Some people choose to live their lives not bearing good fruits, not bearing the fruits of wisdom, but choosing to live their lives in their own way or according to other opinions, which may not be of such a lofty nature. So that's where we need to stick to wisdom, know that wisdom is vindicated by her works, and to know that even though some may say we're simple or, or just following like blind sheep because they just see us like waves on the sea, we know what we're really all about. And we know that God will vindicate the simplicity and the holiness that we live by. So let us take great courage and let us truly be ready to go out to meet our Lord and to really recognize who he is, that the whole world may recognize that salvation has truly come in Christ and that we are called to live that simplicity in that natural way that God has made us to live, and that's possible for everybody. God bless you. Let us offer our prayers and petitions. Pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities. We pray that we will always witness to the wisdom of God working in our lives through our works. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all the sick and suffering, those without hope, those who do not believe in God, those suffering from the coronavirus and those who care for them that in this time of suffering we may see God's glory shining forth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray in a special way for all the families who will come to the mobile pantry this day. And we pray that all of us may truly have a deeper concern for the poor and those who suffer in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died or those who will die this day. Pray in a special way for all the souls in purgatory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great gift of our faith and the ways that you teach us. Help us not to make faith about something about us or under our control, but help us to truly feel the great love and strength of the Holy Spirit and to be impelled by God in everything that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all, his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue, with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to O Lord, our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, 
we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angel and archangel, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy, these gifts we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Damascus the first, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we restore on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is of us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from all dis- safe we may always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Peace the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking of this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful day. We have a beautiful day for the mobile pantry. Praise God for that, at least for our outside crew, indoor crew, has got the same weather every day. But for us outside, it's going to be nice. So anyway, hope you all have a wonderful day, and we'll be seeing you. Bye-bye.